Being a kid and raised in the streets of Kabul and coming down to Florida and training in the best MMA gym in the world, it's something that I didn't get it out of nowhere. I worked really, really hard for this. It, it has been a long way, it has been a tough road getting here, but I believe I am destined for greatness and I will not rest until I have the UFC belt. Growing up in Kabul was actually surviving because my time when I was when I was a little kid there was always war. The wars were from street to street. Like actually during playing with my friends, bar, the war would break loose and we would just hide somewhere for a few minutes, maybe half an hour sometimes, and then the guys would cease fire and we would start playing again. It was Afghans among each other, it was civil war. It was civil war, uh, different uh, Ethnic groups were fighting each other in Afghanistan. Uh, other friends, unfortunately, I lost a few. And it was, it was sad because one day we were playing and the next day uh, I heard that he was gone. I didn't learn fighting when I was in Afghanistan, no. Uh, but I, but I, I was actually fighting a lot outside. Not uh, looking for fights, but if bigger guys or two or three guys would uh, try to bully me, I would fight them all and I would, I would win too. Sia is a very creative, powerful, simple man. He's open-minded, trains very hard, and I just love his mentality. He has the same mentality as, uh, as Tyron Spong. They like to do everything hard, try to make it fast, try to make it hard, so that's what I really like about it. People don't really know him here in America, but they will know him very soon. I love powerful things like water, fire, uh, strong winds. When, when, when it's re really a weather alarm, I love to come here and swim in the ocean because it gives me the kind of thrill that I'm looking for. One time there was double double red flag in, in the beach, in, on the beach. Nobody was allowed to walk on the beach, and I started swimming toward the middle of the ocean. I'm not a good swimmer. That's what makes that's what that's why it makes me calm. I feel that this danger that water could pull me in and kill me. That's why I I, I let myself go. I relax and. You know, it gives me power. Me and water, we are inseparable. I believe that Afghans are one of the bravest people on the planet. Because of what they're going through, they become so courageous. You feel like you're in a jungle and any second anything can happen. It's, it's the constant feeling that you have in the octagon. When you're in Afghanistan, you have the feeling constantly. Yeah, I've been back a couple of times and uh, it looks different because when you're young, you see things differently than we are than when you're old. Any kind of people would have folded in any country with three decades of war, but Afghans still fight back and try to rebuild Afghanistan. So that says something about the culture, about the people, and about the mentality of the brave Afghans. We love our heroes. There are people uh, like me who loves Afghanistan unconditionally and who will fight for Afghanistan and raise the Afghan flag in a positive uh, way and bring Afghanistan's name in the news and in the magazines and the newspapers and the positive news headlines. Not nothing with terrorists because media has portrayed us like terrorists, but we are not. We are no terrorists. We are very hospitable pe people. Uh, we have a great culture. We have had great personalities in the history. We are not the kind of Afghans that people have portrayed us in the last 10 to 15 years. When I was younger, I used to do a lot of sports, and I was good at every sport. We have our own sport in Afghanistan. It's Buskashi, it's called Buskashi. And there are people on horses, and there is a, a dead uh, calf, and they bring the calf over the, over the line. And there is a movie about it too, Buskashi. There's, this is a quote from the movie Buskashi. It's like, uh, our horses are fast as deers, they're focused as tigers, and every rider, and we cheer loud for every rider because he's our hero. Yeah, I was 15 when we moved to Holland. It was a cultural shock, of course. The excitement that I was used to, uh, I couldn't find it anywhere else because everything was boring for me. Uh, go to school, come back home, 
uh, watch TV or something or play, play PlayStation. That was not the kind of life I, was, I wanted and I believe I was destined for greater things. I was always fascinated by fight sports. I went to this gym and I saw people training MMA, Shuto. When I saw the training, I was sold right away. I was like, this is the kind of sport I want to do. It's better than wrestlers, it's better than boxers. In 2009, I stopped, with, I mean, I finished my studies and then I focused only on fighting and I haven't lost ever since. I've been on a winning streak of seven fights now and I would like to keep this streak uh, until I finish my career. In the octagon, I turned into a cold-blooded killer. And that's what, what the war and the terrible things that I've been through in Afghanistan that has changed me to this kind of fierce animal that comes out in the octagon. And there is no mercy, there is no patience, nothing, nothing. The, everything that moves in front of me, I want to take it out as fast as possible and as hard as possible. I think he really likes to hurt people, I think that. That's a big difference. A lot of fighters say that they want to fight until they get pain or they get hurt. He's a guy who doesn't really care about it and likes to hurt other people. That's better than even than, than a lot of skills, that you really want to hurt somebody if you're in this game. The thing is, uh, going back to Afghanistan and opening a gym is something small. I want to do something bigger for Afghanistan. When I'm tired, when I'm tired, when I'm really, really tired, when I drag myself, drag my, when I drag my feet, that's when I feel the most happy and the most satisfied because I train hard, because I give everything and I feel like a real man.